Let's start with company number one, and that is Effie at Sea. Now, Effie at Sea take care of the jewelry stores on board the majority of the cruise lines around the world, from Holland America, Norwegian Cruise Lines, Royal Caribbean, Princess, Celebrity, and Carnival as well. So this means when you have applied, you have a higher chance of getting in, in my personal opinion, considering they have to take care of so many spaces. So I didn't get hired by Effie directly, but the talent acquisition of how I got into my role with HFG Media, uh, which I'm gonna explain a little bit about as the video goes on as well, but let's get into it. So first of all, the easiest way to be able to contact them, in my opinion, is through LinkedIn. If you haven't made a LinkedIn account, it's free to do it, uh, and this will be the easiest way to reach out. I would then follow the page FE at C. Uh, also, they do a lot of their recruiting through Instagram and Facebook as well. My personal recommendation is LinkedIn though. Uh, the reason for this is they have many people that are part of the talent acquisition team. Uh, and by simply looking through LinkedIn and typing in FE talent acquisition, you're going to see several different people that you could then connect with. And who knows, maybe you personally have a connection with one of the people they've already connected with, which might make it easier for you uh, to get your lead in. Uh, and then by simply sending them a message and you might end up finding out that they have recruitment going on somewhere in your local area as well. They do fly around the world globally, their team, uh, and that's globally as in not just over in the States and talking down to Mexico. I've seen them go down to Brazil. I've seen them go over to Ukraine, Serbia, uh, many upon many areas. So they do travel around the world, even down to Australia to do this to the UK, uh, any of these big job fairs. So they might let you know that one of their team members is going to be there and recommend you go that way. Otherwise, what they're going to recommend is you send in your CV. Now, when it comes to sending in your CV, I would recommend standing out. Um, my personal recommendation, now they don't require you to do this, but I would recommend then going into a bit of Effie's information, maybe looking through their website, reading their About Us section, and then simply record a short video to go with your CV to send to them, explaining a little bit about what you love about Effie and what your favorite collection is from them. Uh, now, after you send that short little video and I recommend as well at least doing two, three, maybe five recordings to make sure you get it right. I then send that with your CV and with your cover letter also. Now, when you send this through to the talent acquisition person, then the next phase would normally be where they arrange a Skype, uh, a Skype or a Zoom Teams interview with you. Uh, and when they go through this process, the first video interview generally has been to gather some extra information about you uh, and basically check some boxes. Now, after they've gathered that extra information, check those boxes. Uh, when that information has then been gathered, it then gets sent through to the person that you might be working directly under, and that is your fleet manager. Now, the fleet manager is the person that would then end up doing your second interview and basically giving you the yes or no or maybe about the job. Now, when that second interview does happen, this is where it's good to be prepared for some scenarios too. Most likely they're going to test you with some possible scenarios like what if this person walked in to the jewelry store on board and they were about to rush off to the show. What would you do to be able to maybe make this person come back or make this a successful sale before then? Or maybe the husband is not there. They would give you some scenarios so they could see how you would then deal with that. Now, they might give you some directly cruise ship related scenarios because one of the biggest parts about working on a cruise ship isn't just the talents needed to work in the company on the job, but adjusting to the lifestyle itself. Uh, but then after you pass that second interview is then normally where you'll find out some information about, okay, I'm going to go onto this ship and then it might be about a month later. In some cases it is shorter though, because things do change. I would give about a month on average before then they would give you extra information about the ship placement and going on further from there. Uh, but that would be my recommendation on how you would then be able to get a job working for Effie at sea. Uh, now let's get into the second company. Now the second company is one I haven't actually worked for or worked with, uh, but they do help manage some of the jewelry 
jewelry stores on board many various cruise ships and this is Harding Brothers. So I'm going to link down in the description as well of this video their website so you can apply directly through their website. Now one of the difficulties surrounding you applying for this company and if you will work with jewelry is depending on the ship they would place you upon. So the Harding Brothers they have a collaboration with Effie on many of the different cruise ships uh, on many of the different cruise lines as well. Uh, it's not listed specifically what ship they do take care of the jewelry and what ones Effie exactly does as well uh, but the ones that they do have an Effie store on board uh, basically it's a collaboration between Harding Brothers that takes care of all the retail side so this would be beauty and makeup luxury timepieces uh, it would be liquor it would be souvenirs uh, it would be everything that goes into a retail store like if you have gone maybe you have never worked on a cruise ship before never been on a cruise if you've been through an airport similar to that duty-free experience that is there the Harding Brothers takes care of all of those items now you won't directly start by working with jewelry in most cases when you are hired by that company you might start by selling t-shirts you might start in the liquor area you might start in the beauty area but i would then recommend after you do get on board and in that position that you do make it clear to one of the many assistant managers normally you report directly to an assistant manager after you have then been placed into that position and then make it clear that that's where you want to be able to get to uh, and i would also then recommend so you can move into working in the jewelry section as well with the harding brothers that uh, you definitely bring people from where you are whatever position they place you in over to the jewelry store you talk about some of it and bring those people over when they see you doing that more frequently they're gonna think oh wow this person is the right person to bring uh, now they do carry in a range or quite an assortment of different types of jewelry different brands as well uh, because of them working with a lot of the luxury watchmakers uh, you will commonly see Cartier available when you are working on a cruise ship that the Harding Brothers is there some of their they don't really have in-house jewelry from my personal understanding uh, it's more so different jewelry brands that they work with and they do a deal with to be able to bring them on board uh, now that would be with the Harding Brothers you would work your way up with them uh, now the next one would then be Starboard so Starboard is their number three on this list now with Starboard they are part of LVMH now that means they are connected to a wide array of different big luxury companies. Now, since they're connected to so many of these big luxury companies, a good opportunity that you have with them is even if you don't continue that career path directly on board, uh, this does put you in the loop with many other big luxury brands. If you haven't done so, do yourself a favor and Google what companies are owned by LVMH. Uh, just a couple off the top of my head is uh, Dior, you have Tag Heuer, you have Zenith, you have many different luxury brands under that one umbrella. Uh, now with Starboard as well, they are on multiple different cruise ships and multiple different cruise lines and also uh, some in many cases they are on a cruise ship where Effie is as well so now what does this mean well starboard mainly take care of the retail side again so that's liquor beauty t-shirts and souvenirs uh, everything you see in a duty-free airport store apart uh, from the jewelry in many cases now they still do take care of the jewelry on board some of their cruise ships as well but that has significantly decreased as Effie's presence has become more and more has become larger in the cruise ship industry hence why I would highly recommend and why I mentioned about F applying for Effie at sea first considering it basically looks like since the pandemic had happened they have taken over the jewelry section on most cruise lines and cruise ships all over the world uh, now with Starboard, they do have an array of their own in-house brands that they do carry with them. But when you do apply, I'm going to put their link down in the description of the video as well to make it easy for you to apply. Uh, but when you do, you will be working your way up once again in a very similar way to what I mentioned with Harding Brothers. You're going to be selling something else and then you're going to move your way up. Now, moving your way up is simply by proving your worth. And proving your worth means maybe after the person buys a shirt, uh, have you been into the jewelry? store and then take them over to there and sh show them that as well.
well. Uh, now with both Harding Brothers and Starboard, it is an online application. Now I would still really recommend, and this is just my personal recommendation again, to be able to stand out from the rest, film a little video talking about you, talking about why you want to be able to work with that company. Uh, even though with Starboard and even though with Harding Brothers, that is not a necessity. Uh, then when we get into the final company, and this will be the fourth one, uh, which it is Balari. So Balari Jewelry is a smaller designer jewelry brand that is on a majority of the very small luxury cruise ships and uh, cruise ships that go through the river area as well too. So there you're going to find Balari mainly on Azamara, Seven Seas, uh, you're going to find them on several of the different river cruises as well. Now this uh, luxury brand, they place you in a position that you're more so a guest than a crew member on the ship, uh, which does sound quite nice as well. Uh, but in that role, you're specifically there to be able to host different seminars surrounding Balari's type of jewelry, uh, in-store different events as well, uh, and in that role you are placed into a guest stateroom. Now this is from when I had applied, which was pre-pandemic time. I did get into it, but then uh, Effie offered me something, so I went over with, uh, I went over with them, because I was able to get into it a lot sooner rather than later. Uh, now with applying for Balari, I will link their website down in the description too, but the easiest way that I got in contact with them and through the application process uh, was by heading into LinkedIn. Uh, and one of their senior directors, Matt Whitaker, uh, was the person that had reached out to me me. Uh, so I'll also leave his uh, link to his LinkedIn profile down in the description of the video as well. I would send him a message along with your CV and I would do some research again about the company, film yourself a little video as well to uh, mentioning what you like about Balari, your favorite collection and why you think you'd be the best fit for that role. Now these are the companies that you can apply for, uh, can apply for to work on a cruise ship within the area or section of selling jewelry. Uh, and before we wrap this video up as well, I want to offer another additional tip. Now, this has happened to some of my friends that did apply to work with Effie Jewelry that after, after they had sent their video in that I recommended them to film, uh, Effie had sent back out to them a script to be able to practice. Now, quite frequently, if they send you out a script to be able to practice, they might also be looking at moving you into the port and shopping guide role. Now, the port and shopping guide role is quite different. It's not just jewelry that you do sell, even though 80% of the job will be about selling Effie jewelry, the Port and Shopping Guide role also in, it involves you being basically the face of shopping for the ship. Uh, and also it does involve you promoting several of the different cruise ports that the cruise ship will go to. Uh, there are different agreements with different companies in those ports as well too. So if they do ask you to film a video with a script in it after the first part of the process, then that could mean they might be thinking of having you as a port and shopping expert. Now that does mean that you're not just in the jewelry store, it does give you freedom outside of the jewelry store. Uh, it does quite often mean you will be working a lot more than people working in one of the onboard jewelry stores though, because your job does involve preparation, marketing of the onboard shops, uh, which means a lot of time is spent while the shops are closed. When, if you are working in the onboard shops, uh, the majority of the time that you're working is only when the ship is out at sea. Normally an hour, hour and a half after they leave one of the ports is when the ship gets to international waters. Uh, and then most of the shops on board a cruise ship should be in be able to open. Uh, now that's it for this video everyone. Make sure to now click up in the top corner here uh, to be able to watch the next video which might help you just get that job that you've always dreamed of working on a cruise.